Let's welcome John Caldera. I, I've always wondered what Woodstock would look like if, if we went. I think it looks kind of like this. You know, uh, knowing that there's a sea of reporters and news satellite fans here, we might want to remember how many people. Our block party right over there has photographs of our last party. Go over there and get the picture and show people there were more than 50 of us who came. Independence Institute is giving out our those great Gatson Don't Tread On Me flags. Please go over and, and say hi and give us your name, give us your email address so we can continue to communicate. I've been reading a lot of words lately and I've, I've come to realize that words have meaning. What the founders wrote those words have meaning. What politicians say have meaning. And like so many of us, I learned this lesson the difficult way. I have a beautiful six-year-old daughter. She's the apple of my eye. She's the reason that I continue to live, and she quite literally saved my life. And one day, my wife said in front of my daughter the word, shoot. And my daughter, being very polite, said, mother. That's a naughty word. You shouldn't use that word. To which my wife said, oh, oh no, honey, you can say shoot, you just can't say the other word. To which my beautiful, innocent, bright-eyed six-year-old looked up and said, you mean <laughs> Exactly! At which point I realized words have meanings. Some of the words that have come from some of our presidents. I remember one president who looked at us and said, I am not a crook. He lied. I remember a president who said, Read my lips. No new taxes. He lied. I remember a president that said, I did not have sex with that woman. He lied. And I heard a president who said, if you like the health care plan you have now, you can keep it. I know a president who said the elderly will not face rationing under this plan. Mr. President, you lie. I know a president who said that his health care plan will contain costs. Respectfully, Mr. President, you lie. I know a president who said, this plan will not add one dime of deficit to our children. I know a president who says, illegals will not benefit from this plan. And I know a president who said, if you make under $250,000 a year, you will not pay one thin dime in new taxes. You are wrong. We don't pay one single dime in new taxes. We spend millions of dimes in brand new taxes. Ask anyone who bought a pack of cigarettes today. You know, that's why this is so important. The other team comes out because they have to. When their team wins, we get depressed. We get very depressed. But when their team loses, they become very unemployed. No wonder so many union members come out and say, give us the money. That The teachers come out, the contractors, the bond deals with dealers, the economic development guys who know how to tie neckties, so therefore they're, the, they're Republicans. Why they come out and ask for more government? They have to. It is a Saturday morning. Why aren't you with your family? Why aren't you with your friends? Why aren't you cuddling up in bed? Because you need to be here. You're giving up your time to fight this. You are the hero. Why are we here? We're here for one single reason. Because politics is too important to be left to politicians. We, we, we are the last line of defense. 
Republicans have nothing to do with politics any longer. They have nothing they can do. Yeah. We are the only things that will stop increased debt. We are the only people who can stop socialized medicine. We are the only people who can stop cap and trade. We are the final line of defense in America. And might I add, the line is holding. You know, politicians like teenagers need lots of supervision. <laughs> also. And it is time that we say to all our politicians, whether they have R's or D's after their name, don't make me stop this car. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a president who decided to say, judge me. Judge me by the company I keep, he said during the campaign. at your word and I will judge you by the company you keep. Yeah. I will judge you yeah. by a Reverend Wright who, who hates this country. Yeah. I will judge you by William Ayers who wants to blow up this country. Yeah. I will judge you by Van Jones who believes that certain parties are a-holes. Yeah. I will judge you by the company you keep. judge me by the company I keep. You watched the speech last night, or Thursday night, Wednesday night, whatever it was. Oh, you missed it. We found out the true Obama. We found out a man who wanted to declare war on profit. You heard him. How can we save health care? We save health care by destroying profit. If only we took that awful line item called profit away, then everything would be good. Because everything we do in life, profit has been bad. Mr. Obama, everything we have has been made efficient, has been made available, has been made cheap because of profit. is the cost we pay for efficiency. <coughs> profit is the cost we pay for innovation. Yes. And when profit is gone, everything we have is gone. Yes. And if you believe that taking profit out of health care will end there, I guarantee you, profit will be taken out of education as it has. Profit will be taken out of communication. Profit is already being taken out of our cars. We know where we're heading. Every country that has experimented with this has failed, making us, again, the last line of defense.